Hello everyone and welcome to another incredible game uh, from round 3, also from the Prague Chess Festival Masters section. It is Pragnananda vs. Richard Rapport and it is the game that I mentioned in the previous video, uh, but I didn't want to spoil it. So let's dive straight into it. Uh, another really complicated game. I, I wouldn't maybe say it's as complicated as the previous one, but maybe it is, but only in, in, in a different way. So you'll see what I mean by this. Uh, the, when Prague plays, he always plays the most complicated game that is possible. And when the rapport plays, well, he plays not just a complicated game, but he also plays moves that no one else would play. He uh, belongs, um, uh, of course, he's an elite grandmaster, but he belongs in this group that I call the uh, masters of the mystic arts, like, for example, Daniel Dubov or, or Alexei Shirov. Um, I would also say Rapport uh, belongs in that group uh, because he just plays chess uh, differently than everyone else. He, he's basically the, the modern Tal. So let's see, uh, let's see what happened here. Uh, Prague has the white pieces and he opens with d4. We have knight to f6, c4, e6, uh, sorry, g6. We have the king's Indian defense, knight to c3, bishop to g7, uh, and pawn to e4. We have d6, and now again, as in the previous video, the Makogonov variation with pawn to h3. Other moves are more popular, but nowadays h3, I think, is becoming more and more popular. Uh, probably due to the rise of the uh, more powerful engines. Uh, we have castles, bishop to e3, uh, and now knight to c6. And this is uh, what I meant by uh, w when Rapport plays, he just plays moves that others don't usually play. And, you know, Philidor would probably uh, claw his way out of his grave if he if he saw this knight blocking the c-pawn like this. Uh, but it has been played before, and it has been played by some very, very strong players. However, whenever knight to c6 was played by a strong player, uh, they, they lost the game, or maybe in rare cases they got a draw. For example, uh, uh, Alireza Firuja lost to Caruana when he played knight to c6, Mabedov lost to Arjun Ergeisi, uh, Vitugov lost to Andrekin, even uh, Magnus Carlsen was unable to do anything with knight to c6 uh, against uh, Ivan Shchitko uh, last year in the European Team Championship, but okay, that game ended in a draw, uh, but uh, I believe Shchitko was like 350 rating points lower rated than Magnus. Uh, but okay, very, very bold by Rapport, going for knight to c6, d5, uh, of course Prague wants to punish the knight as soon as possible, uh, that's the best way to do it, d5, knight e5, f4, and knight e to d7, and now just knight g to e2. Uh, in uh, all the other top tier games that we mentioned, uh, g4 uh, was played, but here Prague goes for knight to g2, he plays, uh, he wants to play knight to g3, and just to slow play his advantage, we have c6, now charging at the center, knight to g3, and now uh, there is a game where h5 was played here we have knight c8 by rapport and it is now as of move 10 that we have a completely new game as you can see a lot of horsing around uh, 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 you know uh, going on here with, with rapport's knights uh, bishop to e2 and now pawn to e6 going after the pawn and you could uh, continue with queen d2 you could castle you could you know play a lot a lot of stuff but uh, prague goes for d captures on e6 uh, we have f captures on e6 and just pawn to h4. And now you see Prague's idea. He wants to play h5. He wants to open up the uh, center. He wants to play bishop to d3 to put more pressure on those pawns and light squares. He wants to uh, strike in the center with e5, free up the e4 square for his knight, gain access to f6 and g5. So those are uh, only some of the uh, uh, you know short-term plans, basically. Uh, and here, bishop to f6. The problem is with something like d5, as it really looks like the move you want to play, then Prague would play e5. You, he would take away the f6 square from any of uh, any and all of uh, Rapport's pieces, and uh, then uh, he's just gonna open up the cent uh, open up the king side and uh, checkmate Rapport's king. So bishop to f6 does make more sense, as uh, it sort of anticipates h5 in a way that uh, it prepares bishop to h4, which is just very annoying. Uh, so instead, Prague plays bishop to d3. Like we said, you want to play h5, you want to push e5, uh, you know, attack the, the, the black king side. And now, knight to c5. Uh, knight to c5, Rapport spent some 13 minutes on this move. And it's uh, it's uh, really weird because it blunders the game completely. Uh, but uh, it's, it's hard to see why, uh, uh, unless I tell you. Now, the reason it blunders the game is that you can just play uh, instead of this uh, knight to c, uh, uh, after this knight to c5 move, you can just capture it. For example, captures uh, on c5, and now after d captures on c5, you will play e5. And now you grab all of the, the squares that we've discussed. You have control over f6 and g5. Knight is coming to e4. You're going to play h5, open up the, the position here, and these are all the, all the well known um, uh, squares that you, you need to checkmate the, the black king. 
Now, uh, instead of this knight to c5 move, and the rapport, like I said, did spend some 13 minutes on this, you, you could also consider bishop captures on h4. Uh, is this even possible? As, you know, we should discuss it. It is, a, it is a classical game. Well, queen g4 now threatens the bishop, and okay, you could capture here with check, queen captures and rook f7. Now comes e5. And now after d captures on e5, bishop captures on g6. And now after h captures, you will castle queenside. And again, you can see that you can even sacrifice more material because without that dark square bishop controlling the dark squares around the black king, uh, there is just no good way to defend. For example, queen e7, f captures on e5. You, you want to unpin here, but uh, doesn't help. Like rook to h7, uh, bishop to h6, and if you try queen f7, then just knight to e4. And there's no move that black can make here. It's a disgusting position to have. Uh, but okay, in the game, knight to c5 was played, uh, a rapport allowing bishop captures on c5, but Prague doesn't play it. He just moves the bishop back to c2. And also, it's uh, long-term should be should be a winning position for Prague, but uh, yeah, if you can take it by force, you should definitely take it by force. Uh, we have queen to a5 by rapport, and now queen to d2. Just nicely preparing castles queenside. Queen to b4 now, and castles queen side. And now just queen captures on c4, Rapport takes a, a pawn like nothing is happening. And okay, pawn to h5. Prague says, all right, if you're happy with that pawn, I'm happy with a, with a checkmating attack against your king. Pawn to b5 by Rapport. We have pawn to e5, attacking the bishop. D captures on e5, now comes bishop captures on c5, getting rid of one of the attackers on the queen side. Queen captures on c5, and now knight g to e4. Attacks the queen and the bishop here. Queen back to e7, and now knight captures on f6. So this was an important part of Prague's plan, eliminating the dark square bishop. Queen captures on f6, and now uh, we have pawn to g3. Uh, a bit, bit, bit of an uh, unnecessary move, but uh, still very much winning for Prague. Just to give you why uh, rook d to f1 is better, is that uh, there's no good way to counter it. Uh, if, if you capture on f4, and you should be able to do this as it's defended many times, uh, there's h captures on g6, and after h captures, rook h6, and you just resign here. There's there's no move that uh, uh, Rapport uh, can make here. It's uh, just a dead lost position. Uh, but uh, Prague played pawn to g3, and now comes e captures on f4, h captures on g6, and now f captures on g3. Rapport says you are welcome to capture on h7, because uh, the, with the dark square bishop out of the game, uh, I don't care. So I if this uh, happens, king to h8, I will defend this. Of course, the position is still winning for Prague, uh, but uh, I mean, it's just the way Rapport plays. Prague played pawn to g7. Still very much winning, but Every move is winning here for Prague. Literally any any useful move is winning here for Prague. Uh, rook to f7, and now rook captures on h7. And now, okay, not much to, to think about here. The rook is coming to h1, rook to h8, and you end the game. And uh, knight captures on g7 also doesn't help. If knight captures, just rook d to h1, and still it's game over. But Rapport, being the, the true master of the mystic arts, plays pawn to e5. And now what is this move? What, what is he doing? Well, let's see. Rook to h8 with check, king captures, and now rook captures on e8. So now Rapport is just down a piece, uh, and get this, he offers a queen trade. Down a piece offers a queen trade. Very, very interesting stuff. Uh, the problem is, there are many good moves here, there are many winning moves here, but you have to play the correct one. So what would you play here? This is only the first pause the video moment, uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to uh, try to find the, the best winning move for Prague while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is queen captures on f4. Yes, much like the much like the Occam's razor, the explanation that requires, um, well, the least amount of assumptions as um, something like that uh, is the one that um, is the is usually the most correct one. And here, just trading queens as you're up a piece is the way to go. But it was not played in the game. And the reason why it wasn't played is that it's very, very complicated. For example, e captures, okay, you have uh, two connected pass pawns that's definitely worth a piece now I play rook d to d8 and now after bishop to b7 of course a rapport would be very happy to give up the rook and the bishop to play g2 now the idea is rook to g6 check king to h6 and rook to d6 with check uh, king to h5 and bishop to d1 with check where if you go to h4 then rook to h6 is checkmate so you're not going to be able to do that you're going to have to play f3 
Uh, but now rook captures on g3 and your uh, your entire advantage is gone uh, you lost the the two connected pass pawns also this one will will uh, fall next so that's uh, that's pretty much it there, there there's no way to play this for black however after queen to f4 Prague played rook to h1 and the other moves are also possible you could play rook to g1 you could play knight to e4 you could play uh, so, sorry knight to e2 uh, like uh, you, you could also trade queens the, the, the move we mentioned you could play bishop to e4 to help out with the defense of the g2 square you could, all of these are winning moves but proc played rook to h1 and this one is not winning if anything it even uh, gives rapport the advantage uh uh because you have to play it to perfection now uh to, to draw the game now queen captures on f2 rapport forces a trade of queens king captures and rook to f2 with check and now the problem is uh how do you defend if you go king to d1 bishop g4 check uh, you lose the rook here uh, so you can bring the king to d1. Uh, if you play the king to c1 to guard the bishop, then just rook captures. And again, after king captures, bishop to f5 check wins the rook. So you can't play that. So Prague says, all right, I'm going to give up the bishop. I don't need the extra piece. Uh, he played king to e3. Now rook captures on c2. And okay, the position is still a draw. Uh, however, uh, Prague has to play rook captures on e5. And just uh, realize that there's uh, no way for, uh, to, to push this for a win. And after something like rook to h2, offering a rook trade, rook g1, king to f6, attacking the rook, rook to e8, and now king to f7, uh, the rook goes to d8, g2 will be played. Uh, the, the game continues. Nothing... Um, uh, nothing uh, is concluded just yet. But here Prague played rook h to h8, which looks excellent you have rook g8 you're attacking the bishop nothing can go wrong here but now it's a rapport that is winning here so feel free to pause the video and win the game for rapport uh, while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, uh, uh, you know, welcome uh, into the, the prestigious club of the Masters of the Mystic Arts. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Bishop to E6. What a, I mean, what a, what a silly looking move, but it wins the game. There is absolutely nothing Prague can do now. Uh, you can't really take the rook, even though it was played in the game, uh, other moves don't really help. The problem is the Bishop here controls the G8 square, so you cannot play Rook G8. That's the, the biggest problem. Uh, the other problem is you cannot stop the advancement of the G-pawn. Even if you play something like knight e2, uh, just uh, rook captures on e8. And now after rook captures on e8, g2, uh, knight to g1 looks like you've stopped the pawn. But uh, okay, you're you're down uh, too many pawns. Like king to f7 chases away the rook after rook 8, rook captures on b2, rook captures on a7. King of six, and okay, you're still up three pawns. Of course, this is completely winning for black. So while you can continue the game, it, it, it yields uh, uh, absolutely nothing. So here, after bishop to e6, uh, rook captures on a8 was played. It's the only move Prague has, and now pawn to g2, and he was in this position on move 33 that Pragnananda resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Problem is, after knight to e2, guarding the g1 square, of course, uh, Rapport will simply take the knight, and after king captures g1 queen, and that's it. There is nothing more to be done. The bishop even covers the g8 square, so you can't even win the queen back, uh, so, yeah. I mean, uh, Prague, uh, an incredible player that uh, that he is uh, somehow uh, after a, a um, uh, after a non-losing streak of 47 classical games, even though I said 37 in one of my previous videos, so I, I apologize for that, uh, you know, manages to lose two in a row, but uh, in an, well, uh, well, you've seen it was an incredible tactical skirmish, both this one and the previous game. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a rapport for you. Sometimes he, sometimes he, you know, goes too far and he messes it up. But still, being able to play uh, this kind of chess at a level above twenty seven hundred is uh, well, absolutely incredible. And only only a few of the players are, are able to, to play chess like that. Like uh, to walk uh, to walk uh, on the edge and not fall down. Like it's something. Uh, Something we've seen, you know, the great players of the past do, like like uh, Rashid Nejmedinov or Mikhail Tal or, you know, many, many others. Uh, but yeah, big congratulations to him. And these are the standings after three rounds of uh, Prague Chess Festival. Sorry, obviously not that. Obviously not that. I have no idea why these are here. Yeah, these are the standings. Uh, so we have Maksudlu and Nodrbek leading with two and a half points out of three. Uh, so a very nice start for them. Uh, Gukesh and the Rapport now on two out of three. Vidit on one and a half out of three. On one out of three, we have David Navara, Pragnananda, uh, Guyen, uh, and 
uh, Vincent Keimer. So yeah, it's hard to see both uh, like uh, Prague and Vincent on one, but also hard to see David on, on one. But yeah, that's the problem when you have a strong tournament, someone always has to be behind. And Mateusz Bartel, uh, the local hero, on, currently on a half point out of three. Uh, so yeah, uh, brilliant stuff by, by both of them, but it is Rapport who, you know, uh, waves his magic wand and takes this one. Uh, I would like to thank Daniel Heist, Anthony Palumbi, Matthew Witten, uh, Kristen is the best wife, uh, and Chris Karskadan for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.